What's up, everybody? This is Kurt Dimer, and you're watching After Shocks TV. Peace and love. All right. All right. We're back here after Shacks TV. Matt and Tom with you guys. So on this segment now, uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna get into on every episode here going forward, everybody. Uh, we're gonna we, we're always gonna bring a main sort of topic or discussion to the show. Something we're gonna kind of get you know deeper to the weeds, you know about you know. I mean, we're, we're gonna dig deep into something every episode here, and obviously this one we're gonna bring up. It's not something that you know hasn't been out there for a little while. It's not something that nobody's talking about. Obviously everybody's talking about this, but again, I think it's important to talk about because it's a, a huge band in rock and metal history, obviously. Um, and that of course is kiss. So Tom, let's get into what's going on with yeah. kiss. everyone knows. Fuck. What's not going to have a kiss. Nice and <laughs> sit and, sit and service. I don't know. Call it what you want, but uh, you know, the, the, the kiss are this kind of band that, and, and I said this to you earlier, Matt, you know, I, I've, um, you know, when we're kind of getting ready for these shows, you do a little bit of research, you get a little, you know, a little sound bite from wherever, but this is literally just a discussion. I've got no notes. I got nothing. So I'm just going to go for it and go to flow and see what happens. But, you know, obviously kiss are in the news right now, you know, 2nd of December was their final show on MSG in New York, uh, Madison Square Garden. And uh, they, they, you know, told the world they're done and they announced 60 seconds later, we're back with Avatar. So it's <laughs> kind of gone, what the fuck? So I don't know if that was a genius move or really, guys, I don't really know. I like to get into it a little bit. But, you know, so everything we're about to talk about in the next 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever, I'm a huge Kiss fan. So everything I say is not – it's easy to take a bash of a band if you don't like him because you always had this thing that you didn't like or you went after them for whatever reason. So I'm a huge Kiss fan for many years. But everything I'm about to say about Kiss is not all lovey-dovey because mm. <laughs> I personally think Kiss should have fucked off 15 years ago, mm. but they fucked off two weeks ago, and we're about to get into that as to uh, kind of where they're at right now, this bullshit that's going on, because I see it as, quite frankly, BS with this Avatar crap that they're doing. Yeah, man. So, you know, I would say for myself, I mean, I'm, I am a Kiss fan, you know. Mm -hmm. I would say I'm huge. So, I mean, growing up, obviously, in New York City, Kiss was still you know, the local hometown band. You know what I mean? It was sure. the biggest band from, from the city. Um, my dad was a huge Kiss fan. He had all the records. So I grew up on Kiss. Um, like I said, I was really into the stuff in the 80s, too, with, with yep. makeup and no makeup. I was into all of it. Um, like yourself, though, I, there's a couple of things with Kiss. Um, like yourself, like a lot of, you know, I, I'm with you. You know, they, they probably should have, you know, I'm not saying they should have stopped touring. But to me, mm -hmm. just Kiss, like a lot of bands, you know, that haven't put out really good music in a long time, you know, it's, you know, they're, they're just, to me, Kiss is obviously just a nostalgic, legendary, you know, just band, right? Yeah. Um, You know, my thing with Kiss is I just, I, I'm with, with them now sort of retiring, but not retiring with the Avatars, you know. Look, I, I, I've been kind of, I don't want to say over Kiss, but I've been just been over the discussion of Kiss sure. for, for quite a while now. You know what I mean? Like I said, they have some great classic songs that are legendary that, you know, that just, you know, I mean, they, they've obviously made their stamp in rock and metal history. There's no, they, nothing else can be said about it, right? No doubt. But my thing is just, you know, talking about Kiss, because unfortunately in the last, like you said, 15, 20 years of Kiss, it hasn't been about the music. It's been all about the bullshit around Kiss. You know, it's been yeah. all about... You know, yeah. Gene and Paul versus Peter and Ace and all that stuff, right? I mean, we know everyone knows it. We don't got to go into all the weeds of that, of course. But you know, so I mean, now with their farewell, okay, we, no one's surprised, obviously, with the avatars, right? Because they've been telegraphing for a long time. Look, we want Kiss to continue even past sure. our prime. Now, I think a lot of us thought to ourselves, all right, I guess they're going to do what? They're going to have you know just other people dress up as as the characters and, and just carry on the kiss name and be sort of like quiet Riot is where you have no original, well, I mean, no original members, but you're still sure. out there touring. Maybe, you know, Tommy day is going to be out there with some other guys. Who knows? Right. So now with the avatar thing. All right. Yeah. You know what, man, I I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm so over it, man. <laughs> I'm so fucking over it. First of all, I mean, there's been so much discussion on kiss, 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 kiss over the last 10, 15 years. Yeah. That is driving me nuts. I was I was glad to see. Okay, you're doing a farewell tour. Great, hey, go out, go out with a bang. Great, and now with the Avatar stuff, it's like, all right, man. I, I mean, 
When is it going to end? That's my question, Tom. When is it going to fucking end, dude? You see, the thing about Kiss is, it's, you mentioned Quite Right super quick. Best Quite Right album is Quite Right 3 with Paul Chartino. Moving on quickly, but whatever. Um, <laughs> check it out. Um, but I, I, the thing about Kiss is that I saw Kiss six or seven times over the years. I saw Donington, I think, in 88. Uh, made them were on their Seventh Son of a Seventh Son tour. Kiss for a second, and there was 107,000 people at that. I was 17. Okay. And uh, Kiss, Kiss came on stage, and I lost my fucking mind because I was a fan since 82-ish. And mm -hmm. here was my heroes on stage, Paul Stanley, Gene Simmons. And they were, I think it was a crazy night tour. Okay. Um, I'm guessing 88. Yeah, it would 80, be. Yeah, ladies, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And, but, you know, but see, Kiss of the type of band were, like, you know, Bob's, probably Bob's best video was, was you know, brand, yeah. versus, uh, band, yes. brand versus band. Brand versus band. And was. the thing about Kiss is, Kiss are a bigger brand than they are a band. Yes. And, and let me explain that for a second, right? Because everybody thinks Kiss are this huge band like the Rolling Stones and the Beatles. They're fucking not, right? They no. were never a stadium no. band. Now, they played mm. stadiums, but they were never a stadium band. They played stadiums on the 1980 tour of Australia because they're huge down there. I you know, worked in Australia many times, and Kiss come up in the conversation. They're genuinely a massive band. Mm. Obviously, the South America kind of rock and Rio type things. But even Kiss in their heyday back in arguably, say, 76, six to 78 79 maybe was their biggest kind of you know period of time you know love gone going into a life too and all that shit but they were they they did not play stadiums in the u.s i've got a book upstairs and it shows you every tour i'm i'm the kiss geek by the way so i'm saying this okay. from a position of a love for the band mm -hmm. but they were never playing to sixty thousand people a night that never fucking happened mm -hmm. never they were playing 12 14 20 000 seat arenas i get it still a big band and a big draw for many years, and a big money maker on the merchandise, and should we get out of that part? But they almost led you to believe that they were bigger than they were. They were never this big, huge um, stadium band. Look mm. at them right now. They just played their final tour. Did they play any stadiums in the U.S.? No, they fucking no. didn't. They played no. arenas. Arenas. Twenty thousand yeah. people a night. I mean, you know, Maiden are playing arenas in their in their sleep, I and mean, they don't have to do final tours to fill arenas. And I think the thing with Kiss is. First of all, they're just getting old, right? They can do nothing about that. But they, they don't add value to any show anymore because they play the same set list, the same, oh, here's Gene with the blood. Oh, here's Tommy with the shooting, whatever. Oh, here's the drum wires are coming up. Oh, here's same Black old, Diamond. Same old, yeah. Here's the guitar for, you know, rock and roll on it, whatever. So there was nothing to add. So they just did the circuit too many times, and I think that they're just done. Their music over the last couple of years has been decent, not phenomenal but you know mm -hmm. decent released mm -hmm. the last couple of albums since sonic boom onwards but they should have left years ago stanley's post stanley's voice is so bad it's mm -hmm. just like so bad and um, we're never going to get him on so we don't care we can say whatever we want i hope i don't, <laughs> fuck, up, I hope I don't fuck up future guests by the way because sometimes i just go for it but just go know, for I, it man <laughs> just, I, but even even when he said at the end of the tour and he was like that people you know this you know, you have made us immortal. I'm going, fuck, shut the fuck up. Uh, just, I know, just man. stop. Just count your money, go to a beach in Tahiti, drink cocktails, do what you need to do. Just fuck off. That's all I got. Yeah, I, 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 so I, I'm going to second pretty much everything you said. There's really nothing that you said that I don't agree with. For one, I mean, yes, you're right. They didn't play stadiums. You know what nope. I mean? I mean, yes, and there's nothing wrong with, you know, selling out arenas. That's phenomenal. Don't get me wrong. But you're right. They're not the Beatles, they're not Rolling Stones, they're not Led Zeppelin, Never. they're not. They're, you know, musically, I mean, like everyone knows, okay? Like you said, it's a band versus brand thing. I mean, the best, you know, I think most people will agree that the best musician the band ever had, that was in the band ever, was Ace Freely, right? But even mm -hmm. Ace, is, is, is as good as a guitarist he is, he wasn't some groundbreaking guitarist. No. You know what I mean? Plays he was a lazy great. fuck. That's what he was. He was a lazy fuck when he had the talent. He was just too lazy and he liked, yeah, yeah, he liked he the booze guy. and all that. He liked the booze and the drugs. Fuck exactly. Fuck. Yeah, totally. Yep. Um, so, like I said, he's he's obviously, yes. Yeah, I mean, he, he definitely inspired a lot of guitar players. I'm not going to say he didn't because of just what this was. He did. he did. I mean, he had a lot of Time guitar back. players. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They, 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 I mean, Ace was their guy. A lot of them say that. Um, but like you said, they weren't groundbreaking musically. Like you said, it was the brand. It was always about the marketing and the branding and the business with, with Kiss. I mean, that's yeah, everyone knows that. That's no, I, I think, secret. You know, Paul, I mean, let's be honest. Paul, I mean, he barely even played the guitar. 
you know, uh, Gene, we all know about bass. I'm a bass guitarist, and I'm not saying I, I do think sometimes people beg on him too much. Like, like you know, they he's sort of the Lars, sure. uh, he's like the Lars of bassists, Gene says. You know what I mean? <laughs> they beg on him, I think, a little too much. Right. I don't think he's that awful, as everyone says, but he let's be honest, he he, he's but he's but he's definitely once again, he's not a groundbreaking guy who did anything different. Peter, same thing, right? Just a decent drummer, you know, nothing out of the order. Like I said, we all understand what, what Kiss meant, especially in the 70s to a lot of kids. You know, it's like mm. I didn't grow up in the 70s. I guess I was more of an 80s guy. So to me, like, yeah, when I look about my bands that, that like inspire me with like their outfits and their pr presentation, everything like, you know, like Motley Crue was sort of the 80s versions of Kiss, at least for a little bit they were trying to be. Sure. Um, and so so I get that. I get that how inspired kids when you're young and you see that it's like, yeah, I mean, shit, you know, these guys are unbelievable. This is something we've never seen before, you know. Um, but in terms of musically, you know, even their greatest songs, I just don't think are great, great songs. You know, I think they're good songs. I think they're catchy. They're poppy. They got great hooks. But, you know, these aren't the, 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 these aren't great, great songs where I'm like, oh, shit, man, I don't know how they put that together. You know, look, they were, uh, uh, like yeah. I said, a, a very inspirational band, like you said, because of their brand. I don't think there's anything musically that's, that's inspired. I don't, think, I don't see anyone going like, yeah, man. I mean, Kiss is the reason why I am the guitar player, I am, or I'm the I'm the drummer, I am, or whatever it is. It's not. I mean, sure. it might have inspired them to 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 you know get into rock or metal, but they they wasn't like that was it. That was the be all end of all, you know, end all of, of musicianship. So between you know, like, like once again, I've been saying it for years. You know, you know, like we we used to have this thing. You know, me and Chris Aiken about aftershocks, and you know, just speaking of the show. One band we never really talked about, we weren't going to was Kiss. Bobby obviously did it with Skull mm. Sessions. Don't talk about Kiss because everyone's talked about Kiss. It's just been done already, right? We all know uh, who they are, what they are, what they stand for. And to me, like you said, I, I just wanted to finish. This Avatar shit is just, you know, like I'm not surprised by it. We all know that. We know Gene. We know Paul. What they're all about. You know, yep. it's it's all about you know, it's all about just profiting. It's all about keeping the machine going. They want to keep their legacy going, but this is I don't think this is going to do anything to help their legacy. If anything, I think it's going to diminish it and dilute it. You know what I mean? Is my opinion. I, I but I think they've already diminished and diluted the brand anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gene Simmons said for years, you know, you never want to be that band that stays too long at the party. Oh, whatever the fuck. And they were the band that exactly did that exactly. because, and I and I don't even think it's always about money, right? You know, some people are going to say it's of course about money. Yes, it is to a certain degree, but like rock musicians, rock stars who are heroes to millions of narcissists, they need that constant mm -hmm. feed. They need that. They need to be on stage. If you give you Paul go. Stanley yeah. the option of being on, you know, in front of twenty thousand people singing "Love Gun," flying out over the the audience, or sitting on a beach in Tahiti, what's he going to pick? He can do whatever he wants. He's going to pick. He's going to pick the adulation. They don't know what else to be. These guys, I mean, what, they're 71, 72, I don't know, whatever they are. They're millionaires since probably 1975. Yeah. You know, maybe mm -hmm. 77, 78 when Eight, 70, they started sure. to get some money. So they're millionaires since like the mid 70s. So mm -hmm. are they still really doing, I mean, if, if Gene Simmons is worth three, four hundred million dollars and he gets an additional 50 million dollars dumped in his bank account at the end of the tour, does his life going to change any, any? No, it's not. However, I'm not saying he's not just doing it for the music, but I think it's just that narcissistic rock star needs to be fed that. And the one thing about Kiss is if you look at, just talking about the four original members, they're all fucking douchebags. Peter Chris <laughs> is a total, they're fucking douchebags. Peter Chris is just a whiny little bitch, right? Because back, he, he's always the victim and always like he mm. felt left out and nobody spoke to me and I didn't sing on enough tracks or whatever. This is the same guy in the mid-1970s. He was a multi-millionaire, had cocaine, chicks, limousines, you name it, coming out of his ass, and it wasn't good enough. Ace Freely is, in my opinion, I know you said something different, I think he's the most overrated guitar player of all time. Mm. Preface again, I'm a Kiss fan. He just got lucky. He's just a sloppy guitar player, never practiced, got lazy, so fucking lazy that I had to bring in Bob Kulig, I think, on the Alive 2, the Site 4, mm of the studio tracks because he was in he was in the other studio drinking vodka. He just keeps bothers his ass to walk 10 feet. Again, a whiny bitch who released a book a couple of years ago. Who could re who could read one word of that and say, do you remember that Ace? No, Ace, Ace is sober for what, 10 years or something? God bless him for that. I'm just talking about the 70s here. I'm right? not sure. dissing the guy. Mm -hmm. I'm dissing for what he was. Um, sure. And so that's, that's Ace. Again, a lazy fuck, you know, just very ungrateful. 
Paul Stanley um, is just, don't get me started on him. He was my favorite member of Kiss for years, and just in the last couple of years, he's just become a complete douchebag and all his politics and he's this and getting mm. involved in shit that he shouldn't yeah. be. Nobody cares, Paul. Nobody fucking cares what you have to say. But the one person I think that Gene Simmons, he's kind of a little bit of like Donald Trump, and I don't and I don't mean that from from a political standpoint. I think he just says shit and throws in bombs knowing there's going to be a reaction, but he doesn't believe his own bullshit. Not in every case. Paul Stanley mm. believes his own bullshit. I think Gene Simmons just kind of plays with the press a little bit. So first of all, they're four douchebags, but I love them. But <laughs> I just think that, um, you know, whatever. But I just think that, uh, like, enough already. I don't think anybody, if Kiss, I saw him three or four years ago in Jersey when I lived there. It's so probably four years um, I think that was the farewell tour, if I'm not mistaken. But and it was a great concert. But it was, you know, whatever. But if they come, if the avatars come through town, like who's going to see that? I'm a Kiss fan. I'm not going to see it. No, New man. people who who hear about maybe the phenomenon of Kiss, they're not going to go see it because they don't know what it is. Who's it going to attract? And even if it does get popular for one tour, they got a lifespan of one tour and they're out. They're done. It's like the like the Dio hologram. One time, you're not going to go again. I agree with you. There's no way that can keep up. And yes, the people will go. You got those Kiss Army people who, I mean, Kiss is everything to them. I mean, still to this day, hmm. you know, Kiss, 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 Kiss. Right. I mean, it's, it's, you know, I mean, it's, hey, everyone, they're each their own. I'm, I don't want to like, you know, it's art, man. Everyone's subje it's subjective. Everyone has their, you know, what they love. And I understand that Kiss meant a lot to people in their youth. Sure. And, and I get it. I do. But listen, there's bands that mean a lot to me in my youth. When I go, like I said, Dio. Dio was one of the first, you know, guy, people that got me in a metal was those yeah. early Dio records. And the same thing. Yes. Would I go and see? No. Like you said, it was a one tour thing. No. It's strange. It's weird. It's odd. It's not real. It's like you're just, you're just watching a movie. It's 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 silly. It's unnecessary. You know it's it's, well, it's un I, Your I, legacy yeah. is so intact. Leave it be. You Leave made it be. your mark. Let it be. Just let it be. Well, I think you made a great point, though. You got guys like Gene and Paul, okay? Like you said, these guys don't drink. They don't do drugs or nothing, right? They Their vice, like you said, is their ego it's being fed, enough. that adulation. And that's why they needed to still do it until, you know, the early 70s right. and stuff. And I think, like you said, I mean, listen, it's a lot of these bands. I mean, the Rolling Stones are coming back. I mean, look, I hate to say it, when you get to your 70s, to me, when I saw the Who play the Super Bowl, a handful, you know, like 10, 12 years ago, whatever it was. Sure. That was when I was like, whoa, you see, I, I don't want to see, listen, I don't want to see guys, in, no offense, unless they can still do it, which most of them can't, you know, but a lot of guys, if you're, if you're in your seventies, right. if you can't move around a little bit still, if you can't, stop. Like, like, yeah, stop. I mean, that's it. You just got to stop. You got to know when to say when, you know, I even don't saw like, Phil Collins. Like, don't, don't exactly. Sit in a wheelchair singing or something. I mean, chair. come on, man. I mean, like I'm a huge <laughs> fan of, of John Fogarty, you know, um, Credence, mm -hmm. right? I yeah, just saw yeah. him last. I just saw him last year, you know, live in, in Vegas, and I know I, I'd seen him about ten years ago, and you know he was in his sixties, running around like I mean, he was amazing, and I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll always go see him. So I saw him last year. He's now seventy or whatever, seventy one, and he looked it and he sounded like it. He's wow. like he's done. Like you know, what I mean, he was up there with his no, kids. And he no. looks like an old grandpa, and it's like sure. you know, I can't, I can't. And then I, I was glad to see him one more time, but that's it. I will never see him again because it's just yep. not the same. I don't want to see someone sounding like a grandpa and, and trying to move like he could, but he can barely, you know, he's creaky old knees and legs. It's just, it's like, you got to know when to say when, man. And I, I kiss, like, I think they're, they'd be like, well, we did know when to say when that's why we're stopping now, but stop <laughs> it with the avatar shit, man. I mean, just stop with any of this AI technology shit with, you know, just stop, yeah. you know, I mean, and I just, I'm, I'm glad they're gone, man. I'm glad kiss is done. I hope I, I I hope I never hear or see them really again, except for when I put on their their music and then I get enjoyment of you know reminiscing when I was a kid, you know, in the car listening to them as as a little kid, you know, what I mean, grew up with my dad, like or going and putting on their vinyl records, the old classic records, you know, when they were, had their makeup and so forth. Like I said, leave it in peace. Let people remember you that way. It's the ego that keeps these guys, which you know, just avatar. Shit. It's just nonsense, man. And you know, so that's our. That's my two cents. It's your two cents on this kiss shit. Hey, Matt, look, my, you know? my backdrop is kiss. I mean, look, this is how much Obviously, I love this exactly, yeah. Stop already, you know? <laughs> exactly. And I, I love hearing it from, from guys, like you said, that are huge fans saying it because this these these kiss geeks and nerds with, nah, everything's, nothing's good without kiss. Just stop no. it already. There's a gazillion bands. And look, yep. 
it's going to get to a point soon with bands like Metallica and like that too, man. That's coming. You know what I mean? If if they're if if they're up there and they're ba- like you know Lars has got to slow down his drumming now. Look, you can't play those old songs. Then 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 don't play them or just say hey we're gonna play all the '90s stuff because be honest with the fans, we can't play the old shit. Or we'll play some of the more mid tempo classic, you know, all the songs that they had. But well, again, but you know what, man? It's, but it's not just Kiss though. I mean, like you know, there's a, there's a I mean, look. We know about the the final tours priests have done it, the Eagles have done it, whatever. Everybody's done it. Sure, yeah. Come on, you could go on about you could talk about that as a whole segment. But you know, conversely, um, you know, but then you got other bands who can still do it. Look at Maiden. Obviously they're they're younger. I mean Maiden, they're they're in the sixties right now and they're they're yeah. selling out arenas and stadiums in South America. They're selling sure. at soccer stadiums in South America. That's oh, 60, 70,000 people. Yeah. Um like they're not ready to stop. But I think but I think they're a band with integrity that they know that if Bruce couldn't do the notes anymore or Steve couldn't jump around, they would actually and Rod Small would go, you know what, guys? We're not doing this. Yeah. And you know, Rush, look at Rush a couple of years ago when they were on their final tour. I saw that in Madison Square Garden, probably the single okay. best gig I've ever seen. I had no idea I was looking at the Rush final tour because they said nothing. They finished the final one. Obviously, Neil Peart got sick and you know we died, but um that was their final tour. They knew it and said nothing. And I remember reading a quote a couple of years ago from Robert Plant and you know, Robert Plant does an interview and every single person says, Well, when are you gonna read you know Red Zeppelin? And he just said, well, I can't compete with a 26-year-old me, so why would I do it? That was the best answer I've ever heard. That's ever a great heard. answer, yeah. Right there. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it made him, like you said, you know, you're right. I think the word that you just used, it, integrity. You know, yep. where's – and that's the key. It's like if you want – like you said, your, leg, your legacy is already set. You know, all I think you're going to do by continuing, it's sort of like what we see with a lot, like, you know, I mean, you hear a lot about these guys like Vince Neil and Doc and Don Doc and these guys that just can't yeah. sing anymore. You're Can't just, you're, you're really hurting your legacy. I don't care what you say. Now, if you're doing it for the money, you don't give a shit about your legacy. Okay, that's one thing. Then go ahead and do it. If, if money means more to you than integrity. Sure. Okay, well, then you're, you're also showing to a lot of people your, your sort of your character. I mean, do you really need more money or, or do you really need it? Does, does Vince Neil need more money? I don't think so. You know, now at the same time, we could also, sure. and not to get too much longer on this, but we could also say at the same time, though, well, if if you think about it, if fans are willing to shell out that money and go see it and they want fans it, to keep you know, they'll keep doing it. I think a lot of these guys, right. you know, and maybe the Kiss guys or the Don Dawkins, all those guys, Vince Neils, are saying, well, yeah, I, I know I'm losing my, my, my skills here. I'm losing, I'm losing it. But everybody still wants to see me. So why, you know, if, I, they're gonna, if I'm going to sell out, you know, gigs and if I'm going to get paid or whatever, why would I say no to it if people still want to see me play? So in a lot of ways, it's the fans, really, that are, that are they're the ones that are, that are you know, having these guys still do this shit. Because think about it, they're not going to do it unless people are, if people aren't going to go, they're not going to do it. But if they are going to go. It's basic economics, you know, it's supply it and is, demand. It is, it is supply and demand. That, exactly. That's, that's exactly yeah. what it is. It can guarantee yeah. you that if Kiss were – you know, you know, uh, pitching arenas and they were filling 4,000 seats in an arena, they would have stopped doing this 10 years ago, 15 Absolutely. years ago. Um, yeah. And the same with Doc. And, you know, Don, I mean, obviously Don, you know, I saw Don, I met Don actually a couple of years ago, super guy. Um, but, um, and I don't get backstage that often. So I'm not that guy either. I was just so mm-hmm. thrilled to do it. But, um, uh, but, you know, Don, you know, I'm a, actually, you know, Dawkins' latest release is a great album, but let's be mm-hmm. honest, we can't fluff it up. Don's voice is fucked. You know, it is what it is. You know, there's, yeah. there's no way to pitch it. I'm a huge Don Dokken fan. You know, his solo stuff is, you know, Don the band, and I met him. He's a huge fan, but just got to stop, dude. And then Vince Neil hasn't been able to string two senses together since fucking mm-hmm. like mid-90s. That that He's just an idiot. I, I got nothing. <laughs> yeah. Fucking well, I was never really big. I only thought he had a great voice anyway, but never. that's another topic for another time, obviously. But yeah, man. I'm with you, you know, but at the same time, like we said, if it's supply demand, if fans want to keep paying, That's which it. we'll see about this avatar thing, man. I mean, you know, it's going to at least, it's, it's at least going to have one tour where it's going to sell fine. Now it depends on after that, what's going to happen. That's anyone's guess. Hopefully. Yeah. But you know, what's going to happen, yeah. Matt? Like I'm going to see that. I don't, I don't know what this looks like live. I don't know if it's like 3d images or screens mm-hmm. or whatever. And I'm going, fuck that, fuck that. And, I, and then they're going to come to Charlotte and go, how much are the tickets? <laughs> See? So, <laughs> so you're already sick of it. I don't want to be a hypocrite. <laughs> yeah. I, I, but listen, but if I, but first of all, I'm saying I'm not going. But, and I, I say that for a lot of bands, actually. I say I'm not going to see particular bands. And then I look at the ticket price, they go, oh, God damn, that might be, that might be decent. You know, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll give it a shot for that. But mm-hmm. who knows? Yeah. 
So, so the jury's still out. We'll still have to see if Tom goes and sees the avatars in Charlotte. We'll to, I'm saying I'm not we'll going to do wait. it, but I did with Chris Aiken. Chris actually, Chris said he wasn't going to go and see Metallica, and he did, and he said that for a year. I go, Chris, fuck off. You're going to go and see. You're going to totally going to see Metallica, and he did. So, so I, I'll do, I'll do a full circle. Yeah, I got to come back and eat my words. I'll do it. If you got to eat shit, you got to eat shit. Exactly. So that's it. it is what it is, but that's it. But all right, man. Yeah. So enough of the avatars. But we do, like you said, you're a huge Kiss fan. I grew up sure. a, a Kiss fan. Uh, definitely. I had a lot of records. Like I said, I was a, a pretty solid fan. Um, so in that, you know, we don't want to leave, you know, this in a sour note with Kiss. Because no, we do, no. we do, we did like them. And we do like their legacy. Let's so, nice. Yes, yeah, so let's be nice. <laughs> um, what we're going to do here, but you know. Uh, what we'll do, and we, we, we do this down every episode, is we're going to do it, uh, uh, you know, our end of the episode here. We're going to wrap it up. Uh, just, you know, talk about, you know, what we're, shows we're going to see, blah, blah, blah. And then we're also going to do what's called the last question. Okay. And so our last question for today, keeping with Kiss Day, is we're going to piss, piss, <laughs> look at me. We're going to pick, okay, our favorite uh, Kiss album. With makeup and without makeup, because there are two, yeah. you know, you know mock one and mock two sort of thing of Kiss. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to pick our favorite Kiss album from each era there. You know, makeup, no makeup. Uh, Tom, let's start. Go ahead. Give us your favorite album, makeup, then no makeup. Makeup is the first album, 1974. Okay. Um, okay. You know, they ran from uh, 74 to 1982, I think it was Creatures. That was the kind of the breath of... Uh, the makeup mm -hmm. years and the first thing think about the kiss album uh, the first album is production is pretty shitty um we get that you know they had no money back then there were no bodies but mm -hmm. if you look at just the quality of the songs that are on that album and i even wrote them down not that i need to but like strutter firehouse cold gin use hundred thousand years black diamond you could go on for years sure. even up to um their final tour uh you know a couple of weeks ago they played four songs off the first album 50 years later so I just think the quality of those songs are so good. It has to be the first. So shoot, go back to you, Matt, for the makeup years, and I'll circle back for the non-makeup. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I uh, Strutter is still, I think, the best Kiss song, song ever. I think great it's just song. the best. I, I just still this day, I just think it's it's a great song. But for me, my favorite, uh, you know, Kiss record with makeup is Destroyer. Kiss Destroyer. Okay. Um, okay. I was there we'll was see. it was yeah. well, it was the first record. My my older brother, like you know, we were very close. He's about a year older than me. Uh, it was the first sure. record he ever bought, you know, he ever had. So it was Kiss Destroyer. So we listened to that thing nonstop. Obviously, there's a, a bunch of classics on that one. Of course, Detroit Rock City, you know, I mean, Beth, which is not, I'm not a Beth yep. fan, by the way. I don't like that song, but it's on there. It's one of their biggest hits, obviously. Shout it out loud. You know what I mean? Great. Do you love me? I mean, God of Thunder, you can go, you know, like I said, Kiss Destroyer, yeah, my favorite uh, Kiss album with yep. makeup. Okay, no makeup. Lick it up. And the reason right. I say lick it up is is that um, think about think about where they came from and lick it up. So like from uh, you know they were going through like a, you know rock and roll over. You got love gone. You got a like two double mm. platinum, which I think went double platinum. Um, you know so that was like the glory years for Kiss. And then they went into the dynasty. I was made for loving you, still doing well, selling out arenas. And then obviously on Mask hit, and I think it was the first album in X amount of years not to go platinum went gold. And then the Elder hit. You know, mm -hmm. actually, I think the album is actually quite a decent album, but that's a whole, that's a whole other conversation. Sure. Um, there's only one bad song, and that's Odyssey, which is the shitty Paul Stanley song. The rest are actually quite decent songs. Yeah, it's a good song. Yeah, it's a good record, man. Gotta give some elder love, people. Um, but um, creature, I think they came back with a with a statement on creatures because they said, okay, we've we fucking lost it. We've lost our fans. We became a cartoon band. You mm -hmm. know, we tried the the concept album with Bob Ezrin on the elder. Clearly didn't work. People just said no, walked away, lost the tours, everything. Creatures is a fucking phenomenal album. I could have picked that in a heartbeat. That was a disaster mm. of a tour. Um, I think it was canceled early or they didn't sell out, whatever. And then they came back with, you know, with, with Lick It Up in 83, took the makeup off, and they just gave them a whole new energy. The production is awesome. The songs are phenomenal. Eric Carr was really coming into his own on that one, too. So... You know, Peter Chris was kind of more jazzy, great for love, gun rock and all over. But this was like borderline metal album. When you see yeah. it's like a glove and songs like that, it's a fucking great album. And I think it was their first album to hit platinum. Not that it, it, I think it went gold in its first year or two. It hit platinum eventually, but it kind of brought them back on track. And I think it was the foundation mm. for like Creatures, Lick It Up, 
uh, let me get the sequence right, um, Animal Eyes, Asylum, like that, they were kind of at the second glory years, you yes. know, before they went shitty game and hot in the shade and stuff. But I think that that concept, those four albums over that five years, that was just incredible non makeup. But if I had to pick one, I'm going to go look it up all day. Yeah, I, I look it up's a great record, absolutely. But I, you know, my favorite one without makeup is Asylum. I'm a big fan of Asylum. Sure. I, know, I know not a lot of people two. are. It is it okay? Good. So yeah, I mean, you know, obviously, yeah. I mean, yeah. I just remember, obviously, just you know, when I first heard, you know, "Tears Are Falling," you know, I was just like, "This is a great song. I love that song." You yeah. know, and great um, song. and obviously, not the know, video, the video with all the makeup no, shit. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. The big pink gown and shit. Nah. Terrible video. Yeah. I mean, that was like kind of like that <laughs> Billy Squire video thing, and that whole the oh, wait, that ruined his career. Stuff. <laughs> Oh, I did. It did exactly. I mean, luckily, Kiss Rudy already had it. I love yeah. Billy Squire, but fuck me, that's so I, that. that was a horrible video. Walking yeah. around like uh, I don't want to get too much into bad. it, but yeah, yeah. bad, bad oh. stuff. But yeah, Kiss Asylum, obviously. You know, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Bruce Kulick, obviously, on sure. guitar. Uh, great songs in all night. You know, um, any way you slice it. I mean, I just yeah, great I'm, I'm, yeah, great song. Radar, Radar for love. Yeah, I'm. I'm just the. Uh, that was out of all the records. Like I said, that and Lick It Up were were my two. And like you said, Animal Eyes too. I mean, just I just that era. Yeah. Th those that era right there was just. I think very. You know, when you talk about Kiss, no one really talks about too much that era. You know, those albums, those early '80s albums. You know, early uh, actually, 90s. funny thing on Animal Eyes yeah. is that Animal Eyes, and um, I think my stats are right, but Animal Eyes, I think, hit about two million. So Animal Eyes was, I think, their biggest selling. But again, okay. they were getting the bump from Lick It Up and the hit song, mm. Lick It Up, whatever. But uh, the only the only downside on Animal Eyes is, is Mark St. John. You know, obviously he died, but yeah. his guitar playing was too fast. It was too fast for Kiss. It was too shreddy. Yeah, you don't do that in Kiss. True, and Vinnie Vincent. <laughs> Vinnie Vincent, not that Vinnie Vincent did it on the albums, but he certainly did it live. And he was, you know, Paul Stanley's at the side of the stage going, get the fuck off, whatever. So mm. Kiss are not that band. Kiss are not Dream Theater. They don't need six minute guitar solos. So, and I think that's the only thing wrong with um, Animal Eyes. The guitar solos are too fast. Even though the songs are fast, a little bit unnecessary. Mm. But hey, Mark St. John is not here to defend himself, so. He's not. Heaven's on fire. Still, that's one of my probably great top track. Kiss kisses. Great track. Still, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, he definitely made his mark there. Yeah. I just, like I said, out of all the Kiss era, like I said, probably because I, that was when I was in my little sweet spot getting into all this stuff as a youngster. Sure. At that point, you know, with those records and stuff. But yeah, that was the era too. You had one record every year that came out, those records too, you know, back to back to back to back, yeah. you know, sort of like the 70s that's and right. stuff. So, Kiss were, uh, yeah, they were still on fire back then, and uh, yeah, great era, but yeah, so Asylum for me, and Lick It Up for you, fantastic, all right. And just one, just one more thing, Matt, just Perfect. before yeah. we wrap it, is that, um, you know, a lot of those albums in the, again, going back to what I said earlier, Kiss kind of, you know, pretending they were bigger than they were, mm -hmm. Kiss sold about two, two million, like I said, on Animal, He's Lick It Up is about a million, Asylum is a million, or 1.2, whatever it was. Like mm. rap were selling three million easy. Doc and were selling mm -hmm. two million easy. Yeah. Kiss were kind of in there with kicks and bands like that that were just reaching platinum. But again, it was all the branding kind of led you to believe they were bigger than they were. They were never as big as people even today think they are. It's a great but, point. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, great albums, but they were never they never got back to where they were in 77, 78. They tried mm -hmm. and then they followed trends with the grunge shitty with the you know that album and revenge was a great kind of uh kind of comeback to a start but then they just mm -hmm. got, they got kind of shitty again but listen they're, they're a band that we could we can have a podcast per week on kiss and um, not really the content they're the band that keeps on giving but and there's but, yeah <laughs> no i was gonna say you know? there are already like a ton of podcasts on kiss out there right oh geez so, so it's I like I, I don't no, I, I, I can't i can't i can't like i said no. i like to have no. a, a quick discussion of kiss like we're doing a half hour whatever I can't sit there and podcast at the podcast. Listen to kids. No, I mean, and we don't need to do it again for future shows. We no. we're all kissed out. Now. That's it. Done. I, I, I will say this. I think we can safely say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this will be it for kids for me and Tom. And That's it. Shocks. We're done. All right. So let's get ready to wrap it up, Tom. So before we go, though, I mean, what you got coming? Any, any shows you got lined up? Any happenings going on with uh, down in? Charlotte? I do. Yeah. I do. I got. Okay. Uh, let me see what's coming. I'm trying to think about this now. So uh, I know I've got Tool coming up in January. Huge Tool fan. Um, you know, okay. two of the biggest underground brand on the planet. They they play twenty thousand seats arenas, and nobody kind of knows who they are. Just they're kind of an enigma, a little bit like Rush, I guess. Uh, obviously, we talked about Sammy Hagar earlier. Um, mm -hmm. I got tickets for the Maiden tour, which is November okay. next year. 
uh, Judas Priest are coming back through town. Uh, I think in, I can't remember the dates actually. I just buy the tickets, I forget when they're on. Uh, sure. Priest and Sabaton, which I quite frankly don't know much about. Maybe I should investigate them a little bit. Um, but I know the guy wears all the, the gear in front. The yeah, kind of yeah. They're, they're, they're that symphonic metal, if that's your the thing. The Mohawk. Yeah, yeah. I'm not really sure. I don't know much about them, to be honest. And okay. uh, I think about one or two others. Um, I can't remember. I've got about maybe four or five. Oh, I forgot. Adrian Vandenberg, Adrian oh, Vandenberg cool. and uh, Jeff Tate in uh, February coming to each other. Oh, very nice. Okay, very cool. Very yeah. cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, over here, there's not... Um, most of the stuff's going to start hitting around the spring, you know, March area. Mm, right. You know, like I said, I'm going to check out that Prong Void Void show in, in March. Sure. Uh, there's, another, there's a festival here up in May that we'll probably talk about a little bit on the next episode. Um, it's a, a bit of a thrash, you know, 90s thrash sort of. Um, yeah, so that. With, with a couple of older, you know, some 80s bands. And like I said, we'll talk about that on the next show because I want to yeah, keep that get one. through That's the schedule. One. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, really, it, this time of year, usually, especially out here, there's not much going on in the winter, right? It starts prepping up around sure. March, right. and then of course hits hard into the spring and then the summer and stuff. So the next few months, got to really focus on what we're doing here with aftershocks and, and get all this going with the CMS network. Um, but I mean, there's things pop up. You know, it's interesting here in the Bay Area. You know, um, there is it's it's one of those things. You know, where there's shows, of course, but you know, it's interesting when a lot of bands that come through town or through the Bay Area. A lot of them decide to go and play in Sacramento. Now, Sacramento sure. is about an hour and a half from where I am yeah. here. So, you know, they've been skipping a lot of the beer because right now, you know, San Francisco, you know, bands are pulling into San Francisco, getting their gear stolen left and right. You know, so a lot of bands, Jeez, it's really, it's really bad between San Francisco and Oakland right now. It's not a good, you know, it's not good. A lot of bands are, are not coming here. Sure. A lot of, and unfortunately, a lot of fans aren't going to the shows. Because it's it's just dangerous, man. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah, it's bad. I read it. I read the headlines. Yeah, it's looking pretty poor. Oh, it is, man. It's unfortunate. So a lot of bands are choosing to play in Sacramento instead, which is a lot better. But we there is a good venue, a little East Oakland here, called the Concord Amphitheater. And that's where, like, Sammy Hagar is going to be playing in the summer. A lot of sure. metal bands play. I made him plays there a lot. I got, I got three yeah. gigs that I'm considering. I got, and again, Lita Ford is coming. I'm not a huge Lita Ford fan, but she's mm. not too far away. Could be just. I always look at a band more, but I don't have to be a huge fan. I'm just yeah. thinking it's not too far away. A couple of beers Saturday night. Why not go and see? It? Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I think the drummer from um, Vinnie Vincent. I said the big. What was the big guy? Fuck! I read his book. I can't remember his name. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I think he's playing drums with her. He used to. And then okay. um, Quiet Riot is coming through, but I don't cool. know. Is it um, is G Jizzy Pearl singing with them? I don't even know. I know yeah, she is. She's Sarso. Yep, yeah. I know Rudy Sarso is there. And again, it's not the original yeah. Quiet Riot. And then Johnny Warren Kelly's on drums. Oh, That's wow, right, Johnny nice. Kelly, New Jersey. Yeah. That's right. And then yeah. Warner coming through town with Robert Mason. So that might be a decent... Again, I see this as... I don't have to be an uber fan of any band, but if it's sure. not too far away... Ticket price are reasonable. I can have a couple of beers in the Saturday night. Why not? Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic, man. Well, enjoy those shows when they come, and we'll talk more about them on our next yeah, episodes. Obviously, we got a lot coming up. All right, man. Well, Tom, again, man, great having you on board after Shacks. Great time, great discussions. Can't wait to do more of these. Um, yeah. And yeah, so everyone stay tuned next week to Aftershocks TV Weekly. We'll see everyone next time. Take care. <laughs>